A rim to rim in the dead of summer. The heat is, is actually a plus for lizard people like us. With no training. They had mentioned if you can walk, you can do this. And taking desperate measures. I opened up one of the stalls and I'm like, it really doesn't smell in here. I just curled up and slept. Hey there, Canyon lovers. My name is Brian Special, and this is the Grand Canyon Hiker Dude Show presented by Bright Angel Outfitters. Hey, we've been getting a lot of questions about the Rim to Rim Pack. Thank you for those. The Rim to Rim Pack should be available by May. It's the day pack inspired by my hundreds of miles below the rim and designed to take on the world's toughest day hikes, including Rim to Rim and beyond. Lightweight, water-resistant, one size, and with six pockets and pouches on the front shoulder strap so you can grab your essentials without having to stop and take your pack off. I've already used it on multiple canyon hikes, including an R3. It's available soon at brightangeloutfitters.com. At Bright Angel Outfitters, we do it for the love of the canyon. Now, on to the show. Another Rim to Rim story filled with all kinds of information and inspiration and some harsh lessons about what to do and perhaps what not to do. We hope you love it. Amy Hedke didn't lay eyes on the Grand Canyon until she was in her 40s, but it was worth the wait. I remember when we were driving there, usually, you know, if you're driving to a mountain, you can see the mountain off in the distance and it's like, there it is, that's where we're going. But you're driving to the Grand Canyon and you're like, you can't see it. It's like, where is it? Where is it? Are we there yet? And then you get all the way up to the visitor center and it's like, where is it? It's this huge hole. Where is it? And it's like you're hiking and it's like, man, we're only it says we're only 0.25 miles from the edge. Where is it? And then you get there and it's like, boom. And and it is it's just it hits you fast and it hits you hard. I remember looking out there and thinking, this doesn't look real. I mean, it really does like grab your just grab your soul and yank you down in there. I want people to go down and try it. And it's, it, it is just really, it's an empowering thing for people to, to be able to do something that, that most of the world has not and will not ever do. Something else most will never do is plan a rim to rim in August during the hottest time of the year when temperatures at the bottom regularly top 110 degrees. But that's exactly what Amy and her hiking partner, Gary Teal, did. The pair work in politics in the Dallas-Fort Worth area, and summer is one of the rare times when election cycles let them get away, which they've now done three straight years. We're used to the heat. We're, we, we like the heat. We like the heat. We hate the cold. We had a cold front come through just this last Friday that you know got down below 60 and we're freezing. So, uh, so the, the heat is, is actually a plus for lizard people like us. But, um, but we also know that we don't want to die of the heat. And we, you know, we like books. So we've got all these different books and travel guides and, and finding the Facebook page and the social media stuff and, and just reading info junkies. You know, you get into politics and, and primary source documents and you're reading everything. So in August of 2021, Amy and Gary set off on their grand adventure. Amy is a mother of five grown children, and one of her sons agreed to be their shuttle driver as Amy and Gary planned to hike a two-day south-to-north rim-to-rim from Bright Angel to North Kaibab with a night at Phantom Ranch. But as mentally prepared as they thought they were, the physical part was another story. Neither one of us trained for this. You know, one of the things that, that we liked was, was they had mentioned, if you can walk, you can do this. And we're like, we can walk. It's just you know, one step at a time, right? Yeah, except your quads are totally trash. So, you know, the, the, most, the most exercise we ever did, I mean, we had hiked Big Bend, hiked Enchanted Rock, stuff like that. But, you know, there is no Grand Canyon in Texas. So, um, so we could walk. We were ready. We had, we had done a lot of research and, and we wanted to not die, you know. And so we had the Death in the Grand Canyon book and we we're reading through it and reading all the, all the warnings. And we had, you know, we had camping gear. We had, had, we knew what we wanted to do and we knew how fast we could do it. 
and how fast we didn't want to try to do it. And we were prepared to flex and just be patient. I mean, by the time we got down to the river, I was, I was pretty exhausted. And we finally got across the river and got to Phantom Ranch at like 4.08. And they had just closed the canteen. And Gary's like, can we please check in? <laughs> And, and so we, we, we got our cabin and, and, and just slept. You know, the meal was great. Got the steak dinner that first day, that, that, first, that first trip. And then we're like, that was a hard trip down. And we got 14 miles to go the next day. I'm like, oh, my gosh. And so, you know, they were telling us, well, just get up early and, you know, get that liter of water in you immediately so you're, you're set. And, and we took off. Remember, this is August. It's brutally hot. And for the next eight miles or so, Amy and Gary would be traversing the hottest, most exposed section of the hike, through the box, and then the long stretch to Cottonwood, and finally, Manzanita, where the real climbing would begin. We got through the box pretty easily by noon, I think by 10 or 11, actually. And, um, you know, but we were chasing those shadows, watching the shadows going up the wall. And I was almost kind of expecting it to, you know, the, the temperature to just go vroom as soon as, as soon as the sun got there. But the, the heat didn't really hit us until we got to Cottonwood. And I think, I think that whole, I've, I've seen it referred to as the frying pan after the box. That area, that flat area, it's, it's exposed, it's hot, there's, there's very little shade. I have, I, I, we have had more, more hardship, I guess, and more struggle getting through that section all three times. The Manzanita rest area sits right alongside Bright Angel Creek, basically at the base of the North Rim. The hike from Phantom Ranch has been long but gradual to this point, gaining just over 2,000 feet, but doing it in eight and a half miles. Manzanita is where the serious climbing begins, with Amy and Gary looking at a 3,600-foot ascent over the next 5.4 miles. By the time we got past Manzanita, I was like 20 steps and stopping, and 20 steps and stopping. You know, didn't exercise, didn't work out, didn't train. Just stop, rest, stop, rest, go. 20 steps, go. And so by the time we get past that red wall bridge and, and trying to make soup pie, it's already starting to get dark. And we had the Garmin and I'm, you know, we're, we're updating my son. I don't think we're going to make it out. We're going to have to stop and sleep somewhere. But, you know, I remember somebody mentioning that uh, her darkest time was like the last three miles. And she's just in a, she said she was in a really dark place. And I'm like, kind of where I am. I was so tired that, you know, the, that's the cliffiest part. And so I was really worried. I was like, I'm going to stumble. I'm going to go off the side. I'm going to be in the book. And, and I was like literally looking for a bush that I could like tie myself to just to sleep. And, and it was getting dark. And, you know, we had our headlamps, but I hated hike. I love the Grand Canyon at night, but I do not like trying to hike and work in the Grand Canyon where my life depends on every step that I take while I'm tired. <laughs> so, so we, you know, we made it to Supai Tunnel and that's when I said, I've got to stop and, and threw my bag down and I'm, I was just like ready to lie down on the rocks. And then I'm like looking at the, at the compost toilets over there and I'm like, wait, that's a wooden porch. There's no rocks there. And so I'm dragging my stuff over to the porch and I'm going to stretch out on the porch. And then I realized, but there's like snakes and scorpions and stuff. Because we, we took a black light. We took the flashlight, the little black light flashlight so we can find the scorpions and stuff. And so I opened up one of the stalls and I'm like, it really doesn't smell in here. It's a full door. It will keep out the snakes and the, and the mice and the everything. And so, so I literally just hung up my pack on the door and just took off my boots. A hiking boot makes a good pillow when you are exhausted. And I, I did, I just, I just slept. I just curled up and slept and, you know, until daylight. Just so people know, I mean, we're talking at this point, Supai Tunnel, you're only 1.7 miles from the top, but you were so shot that sleeping in a compost toilet bathroom was more appealing than trying to make it to the top. And, and way safer. And, and to be fair, the, 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 
the the supai tunnel bathrooms are nowhere near as bad as the ones at cedar ridge oh my gosh a <laughs> little less use uh, I, i'm pretty sensitive to smells so that was that was probably the only way that that worked we're probably on the on, on the way by 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 dawn you just don't sleep very long in a you know on the ground because <laughs> we didn't pack for camping we only packed a day pack for phantom ranch so so we were not prepared to camp but you know i had the little emergency blanket and you know being a chilly texas chick i was cold so i i opened that sucker that night but uh but yeah so so we we headed out as soon as we could see because i didn't want to hike in the dark and uh we made it out the next day and and so we get to the top and you're crawling out and, and it's like bucket list item checked off never doing that again But here's the thing many of us find out about hiking the Grand Canyon. Never again tends to morph into can't wait to do it again, about the same time the initial soreness and exhaustion wear off. It's that 72 hour rule. You know, once you're once you're actually able to move, it's like, what if we went the other way? (laughs) That was kind of rushed. What if we got like camping permits and took our time and <laughs> and so within yeah within three days we're planning the next trip back we're not really getting around to thinking about going until you know after you know you know the end of may and by then it's like is there anything open and so we're checking and sure enough there's another opening at, at phantom ranch in august so snagged it and this time now we've, now that we got the room because that's where you start get the room and then we're like okay, how much time can we take? And okay, we can get it, Let, let's camp out. We're gonna camp, so then we're putting together, you know, lightweight camping gear. Um, because we we knew that we wanted, we didn't want to do the cowboy camping. You know, we wanted a tent to keep the bugs out and everything. Um, so the itinerary this time was to, to you know, test our camping gear and acclimate to the, to the elevation uh, on the north rim and then spend two nights at Cottonwood and, and check out Ribbon Falls. Cause that's the other thing we were so tired and, and trying to make it to the, to the rim in one day that we did not even try to cross the Creek to get to Ribbon Falls. And I really wanted to check that out. And so the second year that was, that was our goal two two nights at Cottonwood and that will give us time to relax, re- recuperate. Cause you know, we still didn't work out or train. <laughs> And uh, so we're going to take it easy. And uh, and then we were going to get a, a night at Phantom Ranch and then get a, a night at a Bright Angel. Just that, 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 that hike, rest, hike, rest. So is that what you thought was going to get you through? Because you obviously didn't you learn your lesson about training uh, after the first one. So did you think this one was just going to be like, okay, well, we're going to break it into more days. And so it'll be easier this time. So we still won't train. Right. Right? Yeah, it was, it still kicked my butt. But the, the, the really sad part is, is we had a range. We didn't have my son this time around to move the van. So we used the transportation guys and contracted with, with a guy to, to move the van for us. And so we, we parked at the trailhead and uh, put the ice in our packs. Cause you know, we, we figured out that putting ice in, in your hydration bladder is just fantastic and stays cold a super long time. And, uh, and we, we, so it was, we were at the visitor center area, put the ice in, went to the van, had everything loaded up, went to start the engine and the, the van was dead. So we couldn't just leave the van at that point. And, you know, NPS Ranger jumped, you know, jumped the van, but said the nearest place to get another battery is in Kanab, Utah. So we sacrificed our night at Cottonwood and instead drove to Kanab. Uh, got the got the battery, came back and you know slept and said, "Well, we'll start down the mo- in the morning." Well, neither one of us are really early birds, so we didn't even get on the trail till like ten o'clock in the morning. So we hiked. We hiked. We're now on day two of our itinerary, so we hiked down to Cottonwood and still kicked our butt. Um, get, we, we didn't get to, I mean, I was by Manzanita, I was shot. I, I, I have, I have figured out that I can do five miles in the canyon before I have to stop and just sleep. 
So, so hung out at Manzanita and, you know, and rested for a bit and, and trailed into to Cottonwood late at night, sore and tired. Um, but uh, we, we knew that we didn't have to be at Phantom Ranch till the next night. Because of the unplanned detour to Kanab, the side hike to Ribbon Falls was once again scrapped. Instead, Amy and Gary would wake up the next morning and head straight for Phantom Ranch, just over seven miles away on this north to south rim to rim in the dead of summer. We had intentionally reserved the stew dinner because it's the later dinner, which would give us an extra hour of wiggle room to get there. So, uh, so we made it from Cottonwood to Phantom Ranch the next, the next night. I mean, and, and it was still hiking through the box during the day and we're, we got the cooling towels. we got the trekking poles this time. Um, we still had, you know, too much food. That's like the free space on the NPS, PSAR bingo card, you know, too much food. And, uh, you know, I, I've got pictures of me just, you know, throwing my sleeping pad on the ground on the side of the trail and just napping for 20 minutes. But uh, we made it. We made it in time for dinner and got into the to the cabin. But and this is this is the other great thing about hiking in August. Everybody else has canceled. So instead, it's like we have to get up early in the morning because checkout is like at 730 or some crazy early thing. And I'm like, oh my gosh, I'm so sore. And so we found out that if you ask and you have a credit card with you, you can just get another night in the cabin. So so we got our extra night in the cabin. We we missed on we we missed, we missed out on the Bright Angel Campground night, but nobody cares in August. There there you know there's not a demand for that spot, you know. So uh so it was it was a lot easier though the next day just that that down day of of resting and you know we had the creek we had the the ac in the cabin and the canteen and um and then we just you know hiked up to have a soup by and uh and camped out there the really interesting thing on on this particular hike the, this this rim to rim is uh, from Cottonwood to Phantom Ranch. We were going through the through the box, and we lucked out because it was monsoon season, and so we we see the cloud cover, and and we're like we can hear the thunder, and we're like, come on, rain, yes, yes, hike wet, you know, and then we heard something like a, a snap, and we look up, and it's not thunder. About fifty yards ahead of us. Up at the top, in a very narrow part of the box, a boulder cracked loose at the top and came rolling down. And as it hits the side, it's 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 sending up more shrapnel. And we're like, oh, it's just an awesome sight to see. And Gary's like, we need to move back out of the way. And so we're like, yeah, we're backing up. And and yeah, I mean, if we had been a hundred feet up the trail, we probably would have gotten knocked out by shrapnel. There was a dust cloud that covered the entire lower half of that canyon from wall to wall. It was it was pretty awesome. Wow. But you, what? It, it's kind of like hearing a shotgun. Once you once you learn that sound, you recognize it the next time. And and when we were at Indian Garden, it was you know we heard that snap and we're like, it was further away, you know. But we're like that was not thunder. At this point, at Havasupai Gardens, which up until last year was known as Indian Garden, Amy and Gary are halfway up Bright Angel Trail. All that stands between them and the South Rim is just over four and a half miles and 3,000 feet of climbing. Breaking it up from Phantom Ranch to Indian Garden, spending the night, and then going up the next day, you know, that, was, that was a much easier finish. Still super slow, because you know, out of shape, not training, but it, it wasn't as as horrible as, as when we crawled out of North Kaibab the year before. But we still missed we still missed Ribbon Falls because we missed that set that, that second night at Cottonwood. So then we're like, gotta do this again. You know, we still haven't hit Ribbon <laughs> Falls. And so <laughs> So by now Amy and Gary have a formula that works for them. And this time 
surely it would work for their aspirations to see Ribbon Falls. Third time around, and, and by this time we, we figured it out that, you know, if you want to get a general availability at Phantom Ranch, the morbid truth is that once the first hiker of the season dies on the trail from heat exhaustion, people start realizing that, you know, they booked these, these, these places because it's summer vacation and they didn't do the research on, on the, um, on the temperatures down there, or they check the rim temperatures and they see Grand Canyon village temperatures. And they think that's at the bottom of the Grand Canyon. They don't, you know, they're not looking at the maps. And so they freak out and, and cancel. You and Gary did Rim to Rim in August of 21. You did it again in August of 22, both times untrained. So now here you go again in August of 2023. This time you guys were trained and ready, right? No. Do you guys just like to suffer? Eh, I guess so. But I don't know that I can even say that, that you know, hiking through the Grand Canyon is really suffering. We're obviously proof that you can do the hike and not die, but it is, I mean, objectively, hands down, no question whatsoever, you will enjoy the trip a lot better if you're doing some serious hiking. And every time I see people say, is this enough? And I want to say, it's probably plenty, but you can't, I don't think you really can overtrain for this hike. I don't see how you could overtrain. You know, the stronger you are, the better off the better off you're going to be. Because, I mean, the heat. I mean, we know that a hard hike is tough on the body as it is, and when you add triple digit heats, you you are heat. You are you know, tripling the impact on your body of of this kind of hike. This time around, Amy and Gary plan to spend eight days and seven nights below the rim. It wouldn't be a rim to rim. They'd go as far as Cottonwood, where they hope to finally get to take that side trip to Ribbon Falls, and then they'd turn around. And instead of descending the south rim via Bright Angel, they'd get their first experience on the majestic South Kaibab Trail. This time, that actually worked really well for us. I, I mean, I knew, I knew that I was still gonna be wiped out in every five miles. So, you know, we hiked down South Kaibab, got to the tip off, and I was planning to just like sleep in the shelter for like an hour, right? But we got there and, and there, were a, there were a couple of different, there were like maybe five or six people there that were not ready for South Kaibab. Oh my gosh, we get there and we're, you know, drunk, taking off our packs and we had eight days of food and stuff with us. Holy cow. You know, we were talking to these people and, and they were they were noticeably not in good shape. And so we were asking them, do you need food? Do you need water? Do you have electrolytes? And they're like, man, anything you've got would be great. And so we're like helping them out. And um, I gave them a bunch of the water that we had packed because we were making better time than I expected and, and could afford to dump some water. Um, so gave them some water and then somebody else, you know, the, one of the couples took off. They were like, yes, we're feeling much better. And they took off. We gave them all the warnings. And this, this other couple, they had, they had spent the night before at Bright Angel Campground and went down without realizing how hot it was going to be at the bottom. And they couldn't sleep. She was, they could, they could not sleep because it was so hot. And she was start starting to throw up and feel nauseous and, and, uh, and he wouldn't let her get in the creek because he thought it was dangerous. So then their next thing was to go up South Kaibab because it's shorter than Bright Angel. So by the time they got there, you know, I, I, I had her, I said, I, I was like dowsing her down and had her, you know, lay down flat on the floor and put her feet up on the bench, you know. So, uh, you know, there was still some water in the, in the emergency rain harvest barrel so i was i was filtering water they didn't have a, a, a water filter and uh if i hadn't had a water filter that's where we, we probably would have told them to use the emergency phone to call and the ranger would have given them the code to get into the emergency box that has a water filter in it 
So that's another thing for people to, to know about is what the resources are. Yeah, so you know, we ended up heading down, they headed up, and uh, I had kind of blown my opportunity to just sleep and rest, because you know, not exercising. <laughs> So, uh, so by the time we got down to the tunnel at the Black Bridge, Black Bridge, right? Uh, I was like, I'm stopping. So I just dropped my pack and basically slept in the tunnel for a little bit. Well, you found the one place where there was shade on South Kaibab. Yes, yes. And so, uh, and it was, it was kind of funny because I just got a little bit into the tunnel and just stopped. And, and so Gary went ahead and he would tell people that, you know, hey, Amy's back at the tunnel. She's, she, she, she's not dead, but she's resting. She should be okay. And so I'd be like kicked back and like a couple of people would come by and, and they'd say, you're Amy, right? And I'm like, yes, <laughs> you're okay, yes. <laughs> and and I, I, I would kind of, as I would wake up, I would move a little bit further down the tunnel and then across the bridge and under and, and finally made it back to the cabin uh, got dinner, stew dinner, and this is the great thing about Phantom Ranch is, I mean, if you get a, the steak dinner, you, you get one steak, but if you get the stew and the breakfast, it's all you can eat, so FYI there, and, and the stew dinner is also, we always get the stew dinner because it's the later dinner, it's because they they're served at different times, and, uh, you know, all this working out we've been doing to prepare for this, we figure we better allow as much time as possible to get there. So we always get the stew dinner, the later dinner. And then uh, next morning we moved our stuff across to Bright Angel Campground. And we were, that was our down day. We were gonna relax and maybe do some side hikes if we felt up to it. And uh, set up camp, went back for breakfast. And uh, as we were headed back to the campground, uh, one of us had apparently not secured our packs and food very well. So, so Gary noticed that there were ravens over at our campsite that had just started pulling stuff out like a toddler, you know, throwing stuff around. Well, by this time in the story, after dead car batteries, trailside naps, and even nights spent with compost toilets, you could probably guess that this is the point where things take a turn for the worse. And you'd be right. As the raven ransack continued, it wasn't lost food that would have an effect on the next six days of Amy and Gary's hike. One of the ravens had like a Ziploc bag that had all of his charging cords and stuff in it. So he immediately left the trail to make a beeline for the campsite, uh, but he tripped and hit the ground and Unfortunately, this was one of those things where, you know, they've got those nice little rock borders along the trails to help, you know, delineate where the sites are. And his face hit a rock. So he ended up with not just, you know, hitting his shoulder and his knee, but he also ended up bashing in teeth. And I mean, displaced teeth, no. two cracked teeth. And this was day two of, of a day eight itinerary. And, you know, went, made sure he was conscious, because that's another thing you're always worried about is losing consciousness. Um, but we got him up to a picnic table, uh, got a, so we, a wet rag to take care of the blood. I mean, because he hit, he hit hard. So um, this was a significant mouth injury. And, uh, and you know, I, I, who had not been doing any exercising, uh, ran back to Phantom Ranch to get, or to the canteen to get a bag of ice and ran back. So I think about killed myself just on that run. But, uh, but we got him iced down, got him some pain meds and, you know, triple antibiotic, cleaning up, you know, the wounds and stuff and got him down and, and, and down for a nap. And at, at this point, I was ready to go ahead and and abort the trip and head back up, you know, drop the packs, you know, and come back for them later if we needed to, just to get him up to an emergency dental appointment. But 
Gary's a little bit more persistent than that. So, uh, so he took a nap and then he's like, okay, he says, I want to go do that, that, uh, river loop from bridge to bridge. And I'm like, dude, I'm like, you should be resting. He's yeah. like, well, I'm going, whether you're going or not. So I'm like, okay. So he got up and, wow. and yeah, wow. Right. And, and we did that little side hike just from, from the silver bridge to the black bridge and back. And, uh, you know, kept him on pain meds, made sure, you know, we had taken, you know, like, like mouthwash and, you know, I had the thieves oil in my, in my, in my first aid kit. So I don't know if anyone's familiar with the, you know, the essential oils and young living and stuff like that, but it's, it's one of the best oils for fighting off, you know, infections and stuff like that. So I made sure I'm like, dude, this is, you've got, you know, and he's like, nope, we, we, this is our third trip trying to get to Ribbon Falls, and he wanted to stay on track. And I'm like, well, I says, you have to be able to eat and drink, and if, if you can't do those, and I have to be able to see you doing that, he says, as long as you can, can do that, then, then I'll follow your lead on this. So, you know, he was able to, to choke down, you know, the stew thing. You know, the stew is, is a soft food, easy enough to just eat on one side of your face and swallow. And same thing with the breakfast. Breakfast was, you know, bacon and eggs, lots of eggs. So it, it worked out pretty well. And one of the things I mentioned in, 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 the, in the notes about heat mitigation is taking a variety of foods, you know, hard, crunchy, soft, savory, all that stuff. And so this was another good opportunity where one of the things that really worked for him was those little honey stinger waffles. You know, you could almost swallow those. So we had enough foods that even the, the stuff that didn't really work for him for that particular injury, we still had enough other stuff. I mean, it was, I, I can't even fathom the pain, but we, we had enough pain meds to get through eight days you know, another six days. We, you know, took a day pack and went out to Ribbon Falls and hung out there and, you know, got to go up behind the waterfall, which is just so cool. So cool. Oh my gosh. So that was, that was totally worth, totally worth the, the trek. And then, you know, slowly go back to Cottonwood. But was it worth it to Gary? That's the question. We made sure it was. Yes. He, he has, he has continually remarked that he has zero regrets on that. Okay, so I guess the question now is, you've gone three straight Augusts uh, to the canyon, major trips, major incidents it seems on, yeah. on every trip. So what's next? Now are you done or are you headed back again? Um, a lot of that just depends on what the schedule and the budget looks like. So uh, I, I think we're both game to go back. So it's just a matter of, of checking out the timing. And, and that's one of the things that, that I kind of like to do is, is there's, there's not so much I can do in politics, but training people about the process is one of the things that I tend to excel at. And that's kind of where I am now on, on the Grand Canyon stuff is, you know, I may not be able to win every election. I might not be able to hike a rim to rim to rim in one day, but we're learning what it takes to get to certain points and to do them effectively and to do them strong. So whether I'm willing to put in the work to train for an easier fourth run at the canyon or not, you know, I, I can tell people what happens when you don't train and we can point to the success stories of people who do train. And, and people need to know what, what the real impact and real effects are. Amy Hedke on the trials and tribulations of summer hiking in the Grand Canyon. Gary, by the way, has fully recovered from his injuries. Now, Amy is the first to acknowledge that many will raise eyebrows about her being so open about her lack of training, but she's okay with that and insists everyone should hike their own hike, whatever that hike might be. She's also put together a comprehensive package of notes about what she's learned on her adventures. Well worth checking out. She says anyone is welcome to do so. We will put a link to those notes in the show notes to this episode. This also seems the perfect time to remind you about the Grand Canyon Shade Tracker from Bright Angel Outfitters. 
It exists for hikes just like this, where you want to avoid direct sun and plan your hikes around available shade. The shade tracker is free, by the way. It lets you enter your route and the date of your hike and then shows you right down to the minute when and where you will have shade along the way. So take the notorious box, for instance, which is probably the hottest part of a rim to rim. Now you can see when there will be shade in the box so you can plan on hiking through when you aren't being beaten down by the direct sun. Please check it out. Totally free. We're paying for it because we feel that strongly that it will help keep you safe on those summer hikes and runs through the canyon. You can find it on our website, brightangeloutfitters.com or at gcshadetracker.com. It's a big part of our sincere commitment to help you have your best possible experience below the rim. At Bright Angel Outfitters, we do it for the love of the canyon. All right, that's it for now. My name is Brian Special, encouraging you, as always, to go hike the canyon. Take that first step, embrace the journey, and when you get there, whether it's for time goals or taking your time, just hike your own hike and enjoy all that is one of the seven natural wonders of the world. It is a better experience, uh, by the way, if you, if you don't sleep in the bathrooms. Just saying. We'll see you next time on the Grand Canyon Hiker Dude Show presented by Bright Angel Outfitters.